Hey everybody, Marty Sleevy here alongside Nathan Vella from Capybara Games. Nathan, thank you for coming to the office. Hello, Internet. Hey, Internet. Uh, so we're playing Super Time Force. If you've uh, followed IGN's coverage or our podcast at all, you've realized that we've been talking about this game for probably two years, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, it has been two years. Yeah, it's been it's a long a, time. It's a crazy development cycle that started as a little game jam project yeah. and then turned into a little side project and then and somehow now it's, just, it's just a legit game now it's yeah, yeah now it's, it's a, a, a big video ass game. legit video game two words video game are we two wording it i'm t i'm two wording okay it. i don't i'm not a big fan of the one word people so yeah. if you are a one word person i'm, I'm I, sorry i offended you no it's cool it's cool we can we can agree to disagree okay we can handle that maybe that's a canadian thing so you guys are up in toronto yep yep and you guys uh, tell us a little bit about your the studio's pedigree so uh, we've been around a long time, sort of doing some work for higher stuff and really hated doing that. So uh, through the help of a lot of the independent community, figured out how to start making our own stuff. Uh, we made a game called Critter Crunch on PlayStation 3 yep. in the very early days of PlayStation yeah. Network. Uh, worked with Ubisoft on Might and Magic Clash of Heroes Amazing that came game. out on like every platform ever yeah. pretty much. Um, and then the game that most people know us for is uh, Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP, which yep. we did with Super Brothers and the amazing Jim Guthrie. Yeah. And following that, we really wanted to try to you know, push some boundaries and make some different games. We've never really made the same game twice. Sure, We've sure. never really done sequels. And uh, Ken uh, and Mike and Vic, three of the guys from the studio, uh, went to a game jam and came back with this amazing little prototype for what was the foundation of Super Time Force. That's right. Um, and we kind of started working on it part-time. Like every Friday, Ken and Mike and Vic would jam on it a bit, have okay. a little fun. And it was immediately bonkers. Sure, sure. It eventually became this thing that was like, it was like, oh, this is like no longer just like a fun joke hobby thing. This is like, Absolutely. we need to actually invest time and resources into yeah. this. Just watching people at the studio play it yeah. and have way too much fun, even at the very earliest, most like ghetto format. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of those games, like every time we've gone to like a PAX East or PAX Prime and like seen the game at the Indie Mega booth or the booth you guys were sharing with Double Fine, like the this game is just immediately, people pick it up, they get it, and like the crowds just surround it and, and it's a game one of those games that you want to watch you want to play and sort of yeah that's why we've been like really pushing for for coverage of this and, and it's awesome that this game's it's coming soonish yeah yeah soon i mean we're it's it's in qa right now yeah, so we're exciting. hoping for may june yeah. um if everything goes well sure. that'll that'll be a very realistic thing yeah um so we're playing on 360 now we're playing on 360 it's also coming out on xbox one uh really not a lot of differences between the two versions except there might be some little Voicey stuff sure, in the Xbox sure. One version that I might could, be that might be funny. Okay, I so I could I can twitch uh, the game on Xbox One. I can I, play the game naked. People can see that. Absolutely. So that's right. At the end, you'll be the number one as yeah. long as you promise some kind of of chest and or growing coverage. Yeah, that's good. That's what that's what we shoot for here at IGN. Um, so I guess uh, elevator pitch. Like, what is Super Time Force? We're seeing right now this really cute intro cutscene. Yeah. So Super Time Force is a run and gun style action platformer. Mm -hmm really based around two core tenets. Number one, exploding as much stuff as humanly possible. Yep. And number two, being in complete control of time. Okay. So while you're playing at any point in time, you choose, or if you die, you enter this kind of like rewind mode. Okay. Um, and you can scrub to any point that you've, you've been in the game and choose a different character and time back in and continue playing alongside the past versions of your show. Okay. So the way we've been describing it is it's think about it as single player co-op. Okay. So you're playing cooperatively with all of the past selves that you've played. Okay. So if a past version of yourself kind of goes in, shoots a couple of guys and you die, when you come back, that guy is still going to go in and still kill those couple of guys. Red. Um and so basically by dying and by choosing how you control time, you can create this kind of army of yous That's amazing. to battle these evil so, blah blah. Yeah, blah. death is never in vain. No, game. death is actually, like, we worked really, really hard to make sure that death is actually uh, a game mechanic. Sure, it's actually sure. a, a way that you play the game. So we died, really, we died really quick here. Yep, and Ken came back in and chose a different character. Every character has different attacks. Everybody yeah, has yeah. A, their regular kind of primary attack, and everybody has a charged attack. So okay. you can press and hold the X button, charge up, and release it. Yeah, um, yeah. And each character is going to act differently. Some are defensive, like Shieldy Blockerson here can sure. def block or deflect bullets. Well, what was that name? Shieldy Blockerson. Shieldy Blockerson. Is that, uh, we pride is that ourselves. Uh, I, I think actually think it's Dutch. Okay, it's Dutch. Yeah, uh, we pride ourselves in being able to come up with quite possibly the dumbest names <laughs> of all characters. <laughs> we'll we'll show you some more of those in, in, in later videos. But it's basically each character is a different style of play. Okay. And every character's charge attack is very different than yeah, everybody yeah. else's. Um, 
So I've noticed that the, the, from when I played it at PAX, it felt like it was a very small selection of, of characters, like yep. three or four different ones. And now I'm seeing you have like a dozen up yep. here. The final game has 16 different Holy characters. Crap. Um, and the way that you get characters is you start out with your core set of, of Super Time Force. Uh, going through levels, you can actually find and save characters. Um, and then there's a whole kind of badge system in the game that we'll show you as well. That by uh, you know achieving certain goals like collecting all of the glorbs or collecting all the time shards yeah. or other secret things, uh, you can get badges. And by getting more badges, you can actually unlock new characters as well. Okay. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of characters in the game, and they're all super different. Everything from like heavy weapons characters to defensive characters to uh, Jedi style characters. Uh, I was about to style say. Style characters. Yeah. We're not saying they're Jedi because yeah, we yeah. will get no sued. No one wants to get sure. sued. Yeah. No, for sure. They have light swords. Light swords, yeah. 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 Um, and really, the game is all about uh, finding interesting ways to choose when to time in and time out to, like, you know, find ways to make sure that you're using your team effectively. Yeah, yeah. But also just to build up an army if you need to build up an army to get past certain points sure. because um, we're, we're going to be totally honest the game is hard as nails and we wanted it to be hard as nails and we think that's a very important kind of piece of the game that it's really fun to play a game where death is a huge component of the challenge and we're not going to you know ha hold your hand through it and kind of baby you through yeah, the game yeah. we're going to you know, we're going to teach you how to play, and then we're going to throw you right in the deep end. And definitely, definitely. Yeah, you can see, I mean, the game, obviously, visually, if, if when you first see it, 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 it sort of brings to mind Contra, which, again, was a amazingly difficult game. I mean, playing that, especially without, like, trying to get through it without the Konami code was just something that just, like, ruined me as a child. For sure. And I think, I mean, there aren't a ton of this style of, like, you know, really intense action platformers yeah. with, with, you know, the goal being to destroy as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. But the past ones might have been a little bit easy, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. And uh, I think there's a really amazing kind of game culture and, and, and scene around challenging games. And yeah, we've had this sort of re renaissance recently. I, and I think it's very, I mean, it's always been super important yeah. to, to Cappy. Uh, every, like, Critter Crunch was a challenging yeah, game yeah, yeah. if you got far enough. And we're going to make sure that you die a hell yeah. of a lot in this game. But that's a very important piece of it. It's yeah, a very yeah. kind of like, that's how you both get to use the mechanic in the most fun ways. Yeah. But also, it's it's really fun to be given a really challenge, a really big challenge. And yeah, definitely. Choose the right characters, be really skillful, blow a lot of crap up. Yeah. Use the rewind mechanic to create like a really interesting army, and you can also use the rewind mechanic to save characters. So who I noticed have died. I, I noticed that prompt before. I wanted to ask you like what what did that mean when it said you rescued rescued a character? So you can actually so while Ken was playing, he actually saved Jeff Leopard. Yeah. So added Jeff Leopard to his team, even though you already had him in the okay. video because we've unlocked yeah, yeah. it all, just because it's much more fun that way. Yeah. Um, Ken didn't manage to actually grab any badges, um, but there's a whole badge system in there where collecting all of the glorbs on the level or all of the shards are actually going to give you stuff. But For sure. the the reason why timeout is also important is because you can actually save a character who was killed. If you kill the enemy that killed your past life okay. before they shot the bullet that killed them, that means that the bullet never existed. Boom, time paradox, that character never died. And what you can actually do is team up with those characters um, and there, it's, it basically acts as a power up in the game, so oh you get God. an extra hit point, so you don't die immediately on on one hit anymore. Yeah. And you get to stack their charge attack, so you okay. can actually have two characters worth of attacks. Okay. This game, this game is getting more complex than I yeah. Than it's I th the funny thought. thing about it is every time I talk about it, I'm always like, man, that sounds super complex. But put a controller in somebody's hand, and you just give them a little it. bit of tutorial, and they're totally gonna you understand it. it. That is super rad. Uh, all right. So this was uh, this is sort of our introductory video to uh, Super Time Force. Uh, we're gonna have a ton more videos on the site. Uh, Absolutely. showcase new levels. We're going to have more of this dinosaur on a skateboard, which we need to talk about next time. Uh, but yeah, for more on uh, Capybara Games and Super Time Force, keep it locked on IGN.